Starting today, the minimum wage for fast food workers in California increases to $20 an hour. Fox 5 legal expert Wendy Patrick is here to break this all down. So good morning to you, Wendy. Good morning. We have about half a million fast food workers in the state of California. So is it, does this apply to all of them? Well, you have to define what a fast food worker is, and that's important, um, and it goes into effect today, but this is no joke for some of these employees who have been waiting for this for some time. Now, it's already true, cost of living is high in San Diego, but in California, you know, statewide, it's also true that this is one of the states that we already have a pretty high minimum wage when you look at the national average. But fast food is defined very specifically, and this is important. First of all, it's not applying to mom and pops. It has to be a franchise with at least 60 establishments nationwide. Nationwide. Secondly, it's got to be that kind of a restaurant, if you will, that offers table service right there, immediate consumption of the food, or you take it home and eat it, or you eat it in your car, like we see a lot of people doing. Mm. So it doesn't apply to a lot of kinds of establishments that aren't traditionally the drive throughs or the real quick eateries that we're normally used to eating at. So that's going to be important as well. Okay, but let's talk about where this will apply and how mm -hmm. it will affect, because there are a lot of businesses that are saying, well, if we got to pay more, somebody's going to have to cover that cost and that's going to go into your hamburger that you're going to order to take home. Mm -hmm. And who do you think pays for the cost in the long run? That's the concern. It's the consumer. Mm -hmm. And so some of these fast food employees are excited for the bump if they get to keep their jobs. That's what they're worried about. That's what the employers are worried about. They don't want to face firings or furloughs, much like they did during the pandemic, because now that your hamburger cost $10 instead of $7, you're going to go somewhere else, or guess what? You're going to go to Trader Joe's and you're going to make it yourself. Mm. I mean, isn't that what we're all encouraged mm -hmm. to do anyway, yes. to eat healthy? Yeah. So these are some of the very real concerns that employers have been weighing in on. And let me take that a step further. Not only have they been thinking about it, they've been acting upon it. They've been announcing things like like layoffs of delivery drivers. Right. Now that's going to be to the benefit of Uber Eats and the other delivery services because they're going to pick up those customers. But that's not good for the often very loyal employees that were counting on those jobs to make ends meet. Okay, so two questions. So you bring up the delivery services like the Uber Eats and the DoorDashes, Postmates. So that this doesn't apply to them. This doesn't apply to them because they're independent. Okay. It would only apply to the employees of the fast food restaurants when you when you find okay. that definition. But even that is subject to interpretation in some cases. I'll give you a perfect example. Bread bakeries the fast food exemption they they get they don't have to uh, comply with this new wage if they make if they sell bread as a standalone item that means not a bun on the hamburger standalone item and they make it on the premises like panera does so when you go into uh, some type of an eatery and you smell that wonderful uh, aroma of freshly baked bread that is not an establishment covered by the new law interesting so who who's going to benefit from this then well, I'll tell you, that's, that question is going to be the, an, the answer to that question is going to be time will tell. Yeah. Because remember, if, if restaurants are able to do more with less, let's say they're going to have to have less employees because they can't afford it, then they might be able to have less of a price hike for consumers. That means they stay in business and that means they continue to employ whoever works there. Uh, one more thing, and this is a standalone topic I'm sure we'll get at some point. Artificial intelligence may be oh, able yeah. to take over some of the monotonous, Ooh. mundane tasks that some of these workers were doing. So you may have, you may be in a position where you have less workers, but you're able to continue to manage the restaurant at a standard mm -hmm. where they're not going to have to have exorbitant price increases mm -hmm. for the consumer. They stay in business, they make money, their employees make money, we're all happy. You know I'm the eternal optimist, but let's see if that happens, if we're yeah. able to somehow manage that. Well, you think about, like, you see all the kiosks that we have in the fast food places now and I mean I, I wouldn't be surprised well I know that there are some places that have the robots now no. I mean so think about it if they have to get rid of some of their workers and they allow uh, you know the robots to come in this is this is wild but you know I, I do have to throw this out there because when you hear a lot of the talk you, you talk about the fast food workers are going to be making $20 an hour you look at like our EMT workers they make anywhere between 15 and 26 dollars an hour mm -hmm. and some people are saying oh my gosh this is crazy more people might you know leave their jobs to potentially work for fast food if that's what it came down to. I love that point, Chris, because that's what we've been talking about for years. Is is, is that a way to attract talent uh, yeah. to particular industries, or should we be raising the minimum wage of people in other industries? The reality is, if you look at the ballot measures.
is coming down the pike, there are always ballot measures that are designed to look at these other industries and say, why aren't we paying them more money? Yeah. You know, they are going out and saving lives and doing whatever they do. Um, all, all jobs are important. All jobs yes. require yes. talent. One question at the beginning of this would be, will other establishments that aren't required to also raise their minimum wage in order to attract some of those workers. Mm. That's complicated when you tie in the what can AI do. The bottom line is it doesn't have the decision making mm. discretion abilities that we have. So it remains to be seen whether all industries are going to be able to benefit equally from doing more with less if, if it comes to that. I don't know if I like all this. <laughs> I don't know if I like all this. All right, thank you. Oh, good to thank see you. Guys. Thank you, Wendy.